Ooh. Whoa, <laughs> that's a good This is Second Amendment kind of jam. <laughs> All right, so this week I got to visit Bluffton, Georgia, which according to Wikipedia is one of the poorest counties by household in the United States. But it's also home to White Oak Pastures, which is a super special place to me because it's where I buy all my food. And as someone who is incredibly passionate about nutrition and about health, uh, it's, really, it's really cool to see where your food comes from. But what was even cooler was that I got to meet the owner, Will Harris, who is an incredibly interesting dude. Um, so kind, he's, he's a true southerner. My daddy said, all my life we shit in the yard and eat in the house. <laughs> I done got to be an old man, we shit in the house and eat in the yard. <laughs> he is, he's a complicated figure in the, in the best ways. If you feel my age, yeah. my gender, my race, my occupation, my locality, you get put in a box. I mean, everybody, everybody knows exactly who I am politically, except uh, I'm a Second Amendment uh, fiscal conservative with a gay daughter, and I'm a raging environmentalist. So I don't, I don't have a box. Mm -hmm. you know? He's also pro defunding the police. That I am very much in favor of defunding the police. I, I don't think we should defund them because if I decide to kill somebody, I don't want anybody coming and asking a lot of questions. I, okay. I, I got my own compost pile. I don't need any help. <laughs> but you don't call the police. Like, no, no, it's I, just I, down I here, know, you don't. I would never dial 911 like I dial 223. And an incredibly kind neighbor. <laughs> Happy birthday. I blew at you twice. I know it. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of in the clown hall in business. <laughs> Congratulations on 90. You too, Fred. But most importantly, he cares about animals. Anytime you see something in, in animal welfare, if you enjoy watching them, it's good animal welfare. Yeah. If you don't enjoy watching them, it's not good animal welfare. I mean, couldn't you just sit there and watch that oh for... Gosh. I could drink that, brush that bottle of wine. <laughs> probably, probably will about 6.30. And he cares about the land. I, I can make a land be worth less than an ounce of gold. Now, you know, I understand not appreciating assets. And I understand that gold is more portable and a little bit more liquid. I get that. But land is, you can improve an acre of land. You can't improve an ounce of gold. Mm -hmm. You can hunt and fish and sleep on an acre of land. Ain't nobody going to slip in your house and get an acre of land. You know, and how could that be? And then it occurred to me, why, is, you know, very few people know what to do with an acre of land. Everybody knows what to do with You know, if I was to go, you can wear it around your neck, put it in your sock drawer, or put it in your safe deposit box. But acre of land, the number of people that know what to do with an acre of land is tiny. I mean, you know, if the federal government owns more than anybody else and they don't know what to do with it. They, they, they fuck it up. You know, Bill Gates, you think you think he knows what to do with Lake of Land? He got he got a quarter million acres of farmland. Ted Turner, you think he knows what to do? The people that own the land, insurance companies and uh, it's incredible to me. Yeah. And, and it, it, it makes you it makes you understand just how shallow humans are. Just a uh, despicable little species. <laughs> do you think it's do you think it's them or you think it's I mean the the system the world that we're living who set in up the fucking system? Well, I mean, of course humans. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we we've been known to make some mistakes in our yeah. history. We've we've been we, we seldom been known to get much right. <laughs> and what he's done at White Oak Pastures in the name of regenerative farming is an incredible work of art. But Will Harris is not only an artist, he's also a healer. And since 1995, he has been transitioning his fourth generation family farm from an industrial model of agriculture to a regenerative model, and in turn proving that even dying land can once again become vibrant and healthy. White Oak Pastures is an incredible ecosystem of healthy soil and happy livestock. I used to poison them. I used to spray herbicide out. Uh -huh. And that would do it quick. Yeah. 
but it's got unintended consequences. Because it, you know, nothing just kills one thing, contrary to what science would like for you to believe. Side means kill, you know, pesticide, insecticide. Mm -hmm. So when you genocide, uh -huh. genocide, genocide. So if you, when you, uh, you know, I used to think that I want a monoculture of Tifton 85 Bermuda grass. And if you if you were a plant grown in my pasture and you weren't Tiffin 85 Bermuda grass, I would spray you with something that would kill you. Mm -hmm. And I now realize that having a smorgasbord of a lot of different it's like a, like a monocultural uh, pine thicket or, or corn field or or a cotton field, you, you want a lot of different species living in symbiotic relationships with each other. Yeah. Because that's, 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 that's when it's working. Yeah. That's what people, that everyone talks about eating a diversity of food and everything. That's been a whole trend. And I'm like, I just eat red meat because red meat itself is such a diverse, yeah, exactly. like there's it, so much in right. it. If it was uh, meat coming out of a feedlot, fed a uh, TM, we used to call it a TMR, total mixed ration. Right. You know, that would, uh, you know a, a food uh, nutritionist would formulate what grains would fatten cattle the quick the quickest and that cattle would get that same feed delivered in the bunker yeah. every day I'm, yeah. and i'm fixing to show you the antithesis of that right up here wow cool yeah that's funny yeah, that's, that's now they use the same feed on humans basically in the form of like cereal and yeah, like, yeah well, that's right and they wonder why we're getting fat you know, how much of it how much of it how much of that is corn you know, yeah, it won't, exactly. it won't, it's corn and soy. Corn and soy. If, you, if you took the corn and soy out of every pot in the grocery store, it wouldn't be much left. Yeah. Right. And through the process of regeneration, wildlife and native plant species have begun reappearing. The air has cleared as carbon becomes sequestered in the soil, and a large community of employees, nearby residents, and consumers around the region are reaping the benefits of a more nutrient-dense diet that only healed land can provide. Did you see that little white, whitish bird? I did bird? see the little guy, yeah. I don't one. know what that was. I'm, I'm, I have no idea. There's a lot of stuff I see. I can't tell you what the taxonomy is, but I know. I bet you, you have new species probably show up. Too, we do so have a lot of new species, yeah. 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 Kind of learning as you go. Most good. of which are welcome. Some yeah. of which, like the bald eagles, are eating my ass up. Okay. We plant a lot of trees. Those are pecan trees out there. I, I, don't, I hate monocultural pine tree plantations. Yeah. Well, you know, pine tree plantation to me is like a cotton field in Mississippi or a corn field in Iowa. Yeah. But if you plant, you know, uh, uh, um, a lot of different species living in symbiotic relationships, those are pecan, those are green ash, white oak, uh -huh. willow, hackberry, red cedar. How does the how does the vegetable garden and the animal production work together? Oh, uh, animal compost feeds the vegetable garden. Uh -huh. Vegetable garden feeds us, and the any any uh, fruit or vegetables that we are in excess, or if it's not pretty, it's fed back to the animals. Okay, okay. Uh, we bring animals up to graze it when it's not growing. There's some sheep over here. Anything that's not marketable which is a viscerate, gut fill, uh, uh, feathers, some bones are ground up and hauled to our compost pile. We generate about nine tons a day, mm -hmm. five days a week of what they call packing plant waste. Uh -huh. And I consider it a nutrient stream. Through beef production, the folks at White Oak Pastures have sequestered hundreds of tons of CO2 in the soil making their land living proof that when cattle are raised on a regenerative model of agriculture, they are not only an integral part of the cycle of life, but also one of Earth's most powerful weapons in fighting climate change. It's, it's a lie. You know, it's, I mean, the yeah. cattle are destroying their... So if you want to say that the uh, confinement animal uh, uh -huh. industry is destroying the Earth, I say, yeah, I, I'll give you some examples. And I'll, I'll help you with that. Yeah. <clears throat> but... Animals raised in the emulation of nature, biomimicry, are part of the solution mitigating climate change. Mm -hmm. Just, just fucking is. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry if that's inconvenient for you to hear that. But it just, it's just, 
it's just the case. There's, there's, there's vegans who I respect, and there's militant vegans who I don't respect. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> vegans choose to not eat meat. It's fine. Militant vegans choose that nobody can eat meat, and that's not okay. And they, they, they literally loathe the regenerative land management movement because they have made so much traction with cows are destroying the earth. And now that people like me can literally have scientific studies, third party studies that show that no, the yeah. ruminants are, are a uh, integral part of fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. They just go ape shit. You know, I, I've been attacked personally, not, not physically, but in the media, <clears throat> because they can't bear to hear the truth. This is two soil samples that uh, a guy took this past weekend that was visiting here and he left them. But this is from land that I've managed holistically for 20 years. And this is from a neighbor's. And I don't know, can you pick up those color differences? Is that showing up very well? It's not quite, but I, yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell. There's a dramatic difference yeah, in this literature. soil and this soil. When I do, when I when we pulled this soil out of the ground, it was just full of earthworms. This one had no, nothing living in it. This is a this is a organic medium. It's just teeming with life, and this is a dead mineral medium. This 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 is more like a a dirt parking lot, you know, you know a, a filling station. You know. Uh, how scalable is this? And I, and I would tell you that it is of limited scalability. It is highly replicatable, but it's limited scalability. We, you know, we're probably as big as we need to be. Wow. And, and, uh, and that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but it's highly replicatable. You can, you can have, have one or two or three in every ag county in the, in the country. You know, one, one of the ugly truths that we don't want to face is the, the earth has a carrying capacity. Now, only so many people can live on this earth successfully. And, and whether or not my farming method, land management method, or the industrial one it has the highest carrying capacity is a subject for discussion. So if, if the first thing we're going to run out of feeding the population is land, mm -hmm. then the industrial model is better than mine because they can produce more calories or ounces of protein per acre than I can. That, they, they, that, that, that system feeds more people. Okay. Okay. Now, if the first thing we run out of is petroleum, mine is better. If the first thing we run out of is fish in the sea because we killed them with all the stuff going down the Mississippi, mine is better. If the, we run out of uh, antibiotics, it's not, the pathogens are not immune, mine is better because I don't do that. Yeah. If it's uh, potassium and phosphate that we dig out of soil reductively to fertilize, mine is better. Mm -hmm. So I can go on, I, I, can, I can probably come up with 99 scenarios in which my method is more resilient, mm -hmm. but we all think we just not enough land to, to, to feed everybody. Correct. There's not enough land to feed everybody in either scenario, yeah. but that's their scenario feeds more people per acre of land than we do. Yeah. We feed more people per gallon of oil, per fish in the sea, per, 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 per. What I absolutely know is you can't keep increasing the population uh, exponentially, and and it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I, the COVID. You know, I I, <clears throat> I I say that COVID is the new bear. You know, used to we had bears, and bears kept the population in check. Yeah. And you know, you know what? The, who the bears ate? Old people, people with pre-existing conditions, people that that genetically couldn't get out of the way. Wow. But we killed the bears. And this is where we got COVID-19. And you know what COVID-19 killed? Old people, people with pre-existing conditions, people that genetically have something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's the new bear. And when 
we inoculate ourselves out of COVID-19, it'll be a COVID-20. May not be a, it may not be a new, new virus, I think we're, it may not be one of those, yeah. it may be something else, but something will keep the population in check. Yeah. Mother Nature is absolutely got this under control. We have people come in and they say, oh, I just think it's terrible what we're doing to the natural world. Don't you worry about the natural world. She'll be fine.